films just received from Korea reveal the incident which leads General Ridgway to suspend truce talks. A column of red troops armed with mortars, rifles, pistols, and grenades is photographed by a Warner Pathé news cameraman marching through Kaesong in violation of red promises that no armed personnel would be allowed in the true city. Spotting our cameraman, the communist troops try to hide themselves and their weapons in the bushes. But the incident is already imperishably recorded on newsreel film. The Reds' company commander, trying to scare our cameraman away, reaches for his gun, an action you will now see frozen. Our cameraman sneaks one final shot, holding his camera on his hip before leaving. Admiral Joy hurries away to report the incident, and General Ridgway orders UN negotiators not to return to the conference room until the Reds guarantee it won't happen again. To Washington's Union Station comes President Truman to turn the Royal Lounge, built years ago for visiting dignitaries, over to some VIPs, very important people. On behalf of their fellow service men and women, Sergeant Irving Waite and Seaman Shirley Burns receive the keys to the room, which now becomes a USO club. It's a royal lounge for our own VIPs, the GIs. At Salzburg, Austria, 15,000 Boy Scouts from 26 free nations around the world convene in their seventh world jamboree. 600 American Scouts, some dressed as Indians, are among those to participate in the jamboree. Held only 20 miles from Russia's Iron Curtain, it is dedicated to establishing friendship and understanding between boys who will tomorrow be the leaders of the free world. A giant jamboree proves once more that boys are boys the world over. At Warner's Hollywood Theater, they roll out the carpet for the Hollywood premiere of Captain Horatio Hornblower. Warner star Steve Cochran manages to get through the crowd. So does Dennis Morgan, who's pretty busy signing autographs. Here's the picture's co-star, Virginia Mayo, with husband Michael O'Shea. British Consul General Robert Haddow presents Miss Mayo with a scroll signed by Mountbatten of Burma. The honor commemorates the Warner Brothers' silver anniversary of talking motion pictures, climaxed by Captain Horatio Hornblower. <laughs> Off Chile, a lookout scans the ocean, and there she blows. It's a blue whale 70 feet in length. The ship's captain mans the harpoon gun. The great stricken sea beast is far from finished. Flashing about furiously, it tows the heavy whaling boat through the waters of the Pacific at 12 miles an hour. This 65-ton monster, heaving his last, is just one of 1,200 caught each year in Chile's newest industry. With each blue whale valued at about $3,000 for oil and fertilizer, whaling expeditions have proven very profitable. After a couple of days at sea, ships often return to port, towing a whole string of goliaths. Down South America way, it's a whale of a whale hunt. At Fairyland Spa in New York's fashionable Regal Park section, a quartet of cute kids climbs onto the roller coaster to prove that little angels rush where adults fear to tread. And incidentally, to give you an idea of what's being worn by today's fashion-wise young set. Cinderella dresses, cotton outfits for daytime and playtime are starring on the young fashion merry-go-round. The nice thing about these Cinderella outfits, besides their looks, is that they cost under $5. Just the thing for kids to wear around and around and around. Well, no party in the park would be complete without ice cream. But don't worry, Mommy, the outfits are washable. At a press conference in New York, Army coach Red Blake expresses his feelings and intentions concerning the expelling of 90 cadets for cheating. I regret beyond words that this unfortunate situation has happened to our great institution, the Military Academy. 
I would also be unfaithful to the splendid youngsters who erred and to their families if I did not state that I know them to be young men of high character and purpose. This has not altered my belief in West Point, and I intend to stay as football coach. At Good Time Park in Goshen, New York, it's the Kentucky Derby of harness racing, the Hamiltonian. Parading to the post is the largest field ever, including a 25 to one shot named Mainliner. The crowd grows tense. Here they come, 21 horses thundering after the starter's car. It looks good, it is good. They're off. Best two heats out of three decides the Hamiltonian. And this is heat number two. Heat number one went to the unknown mainliner whose owner, believe it or not, hadn't even seen him before. Now the big question is, can mainliner repeat in the richest of these famous races? Driven by a 59-year-old rainsman named Crying Guy Crippen, mainliner proceeds to give the answer. Down the home stretch, the great sophomore Colt is planning to glory in two straight heats. Mainliner has the picture all to himself as he wins a $51,000 purse by breezing away with a Hamiltonian. Oh, Tony,